As ministers resign their seats to vie for the position of Speaker of Parliament, the question is, why are they willing to throw away their privileges for a shot at a slot they are not sure they can win? Are we witnessing a facade? Yusuf Serunkuma, a political analyst, believes so. He thinks most of those vying for the position are under instructions to do so. The president has a lot of interest in this position. So whoever considers standing for that position must have gauged to see, am I on the right footing with the president? Because if the danger is that you resign and you don't, you, you don't chance, stand a chance of returning, and you know the president is not your friend, will not second your bid, nobody will resign. I guarantee you that. Nobody will resign unless they are dumb or as courageous as Rebecca Kadiag. There is also the belief that given the semi-independence of the Speaker's office, the ministers could be running away from the stifling rules and lack of independence in cabinet. I do not think that the yardstick is going to be uh, on who is more independent in the league of the late Francis Ayume and Wapahabolo. No, the yardstick is going to be in terms of who is more willing to help the ruling government to have its agenda go through Parliament smoothly. What value are these ministers bringing to the position? Is it about uplifting the quality of debate or is it about the perks offered by the position? The president has lowered, has denigrated the position of Parliament. Right? If he's not throwing money at MPs, he's throwing SFC or beautiful women as select MPs. It doesn't matter whoever is speaker, right? As you can see, I mean, major legislation that Museveni wanted, small or big, they've sailed through parliament uninterrupted. Serun Kuma says the opposition has no say in the speakership race. I have heard they are, they are negotiating the Peter speakership, which I think is very disappointing on the part of their voters. It's irrelevant in terms of politics, but it's significant in terms of money. It is significant in terms of the packs that come with being deputy speaker. Dr. Sam Kaziwe, an academic and researcher, believes that the Northern Uganda question will dominate the speakership race. The barrier is likely to happen after a new speaker is appointed. And you can, um, you can imagine the kind of speeches you're going to have if after this election they are not represented. However, he decries what he calls the hypocrisy with which people are presenting their interests. I can assure you, if the statements made by the people from northern Uganda after the death of Olanya were made by a person, say, from central Uganda, the debate would be totally different. That person would be called parochial, would also be called a tribal chauvinist. And I'm not condemning them. In fact, I'm encouraging them to continue to pursue that line because in multi-ethnic societies like Uganda, it is okay for every community to demand for its share. The Speaker of Parliament will be voted into office on Friday. Gillian Nantume, NTV Tonight.